guys, Richard Olden here. Welcome to the channel. I've got a 3800 Series 2 V6 up on the dyno. Would you rather run it with nitrous or boost? Which one makes more power? In this video, we have a naturally aspirated 3800 Series 2 V6, which I have a very cool intake test for you, so make sure to check it out. I'm also going to compare nitrous versus boost. Which one adds more power to our NA V6? Check it out. Okay, we're going to take a look at our naturally aspirated 3800. It's an L67. It was originally a supercharged motor, but we actually uh, did some upgrades on it and made it into a fairly healthy NA combination. Let's take a look here. We ran this thing with a comp cam, so we had 510 lift. 210 to 20 degree duration split at 115 degree lobe separation angle. We also ran it with the tubular headers that we run on the supercharged combination. The other thing that we did was we ran this thing with an intake manifold that consisted of the lower intake manifold for the blower and then the upper intake manifold was basically the M90 supercharger with the rotor pack removed and we made a cover plate as I'm showing here. We ran it with the stock mass air meter and throttle body assembly that came with the L67 with that early 3800 series 2 and we ran that as the intake manifold. So run in this manner our naturally aspirated combination produced 247 horsepower and 240 foot pounds of torque. And I know everyone's looking at this weird dip and I'm still trying to figure out exactly what happened there. It seemed to be fairly consistent but we're going to take a look at the dyno and see if maybe there's something going on with a servo. Um, I don't think that there is, but that's what we're going to look at. Uh, I don't know if this is just a function of the, the way that the intake manifold is working on the NA version. Um, if you guys have any experience out there on any of the L67 stuff, if you guys have ever run those NA, let me know what happens. But we did, our first modification was basically to try and port the factory supercharger. And by porting it, I don't mean that we ported the entry or even ported the exit like you do normally on a supercharged combination. What I did is I simply just went in and cut out the V section um, for the discharge of the supercharger, thinking that the in the NA combination that that might be a restriction to airflow and it may disturb the airflow going into the lower manifold. And here's what happened when I did that. I just wanted to see if the thing was going to respond to any kind of porting and doing an easy cut like this was a good first step. And we can see we did indeed pick up power. The peak power went up to 249 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 243. And we gained gains in the middle there. Um, but the porting really didn't uh, improve the power dramatically. I mean, we only went up from 247 to 249. So not a big amount of power from the porting. But lucky for us, we have a way to make the NA combination even more powerful, obviously. And that is nitrous. So let's take a look at what happened when we added nitrous to the equation. So once again, this is our NA combination. This was actually before we did the porting on the lower portion of the blower manifold. And the reason for that is that we ran this test with the nitrous before we did that upgrade. So this is our NA version, 247 horsepower, 241 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we added our nitrous from Nitrous Express. We added a simple wet fogger system with a 52-28 jet split, 52 nitrous, 28 fuel. And the big disparity in the jet size for the nitrous kit was because we were running high pressure EFI fuel to this. And we ran uh, E85, this, we ran this NA motor on E85, and we plumbed the fuel portion of the nitrous with E85 as well. Here's what happened when we added our first nitrous setup. 
And as you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a, a quick video here. This is the nitrous activation. I position the nitrous in front of the throttle body using this quickie bracket that I made, unfortunately, as you can see here. It was not aimed properly, and so it was kind of spraying nitrous all over the place. So we thought, well, I wonder if that's going to be a big change in power there. So I did another bracket for it, and then we redid the nitrous test and did another hit, same shot, 52-28. Nitrous bottle was heated up as we always do with the West Tech bottle heater. And then here's what happened when we improved and basically got all of the nitrous. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a video here. Here's the motor running again. You can see that all the nitrous is now going into the motor like it's supposed to. And we did indeed have a change in power, although it was not dramatic. I was hoping for another 50 horsepower, but that's actually not what happened. Here's what happened. We picked up, uh, power went up from 342 to 350 or 351. So essentially we picked up 10 or maybe as much as 11 horsepower earlier on in the curve. So it looks like most of the nitrous was getting in there. Maybe not all of it, but even when I aimed it at the edge there, it looked like most of the nitrous was getting in there because you have a good draw there from the NA motor and then when you add the nitrous to it, most of that was going in there with the fuel and we did uh, improve the power output, but now let's see how this compares to the blower. Now we've taken a look at what happened when we added nitrous to our naturally aspirated 3800. Let's find out what happens when we add boost. And boost in this case came in the form of a Gen 5 L32 supercharger, basically the upgraded version that originally came on this L67. It was a Gen 5 blower. We also had it equipped with a three inch blower pulley, which meant we were spinning the blower much faster than it was when it was originally stocked. We also had the larger uh, L32 throttle body, so we get more airflow going in. Basically, this is a good upgrade. We're spinning the blower faster. I'll show you what happened when we add that supercharger to this engine combination. We jumped the power output from just under 250 horsepower all the way up to 400 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 384 foot-pounds of torque. So the blower obviously spinning it with the three inch blower pulley worked very well. Here's our, our comparison for those of you keeping score. This is what happened when we added the nitrous to it. Making 350 horsepower. So the nitrous improved the power output by about 100 horsepower over our NA version. And then we jumped up to 400 horsepower though when we added boost. So if you were comparing these two, obviously most guys would pick the 400 horsepower boosted version. But here are a couple of considerations. One, we could have started out with a much more powerful NA version. In fact, if you were gonna run an NA version and then run nitrous on it, you probably would opt for the NA version of the 3800 and not the supercharged version, not the low compression version. You also would put probably a different camshaft in it and you would definitely have a different intake manifold. That means you would be starting at a much higher power level and then if you added this much nitrous, you would end at a much higher power level and then obviously you could add a little bit more nitrous to get up to this 400 horsepower version. The other thing to think about is which one of these could you more successfully probably run on 91 or 93 octane pump gas? Probably the nitrous version. The boost level was fairly high in this 400 horsepower version of the supercharged combination. We are also running that on E85. Now we also ran the NA and the nitrous version on E85 but both of those would make the same power if we ran them both on 91 or 93 octane pump gas. The E85 doesn't seem to gain too much power on the NA combinations or the nitrous combination, but it does gain a lot of power on the boosted combinations. So if you wanted to run these on pump gas, I think the nitrous has a lot going for it. Obviously, we can make more power under boost, but the ideal combination, and we've already seen this in one of the previous videos, if you combine the nitrous and the boost, <laughs> and I'll show you just real quickly what we did there. You can see adding nitrous to the boost pushed things up way over 500 horsepower, 565 horsepower at the peak, and more like 530 or so uh, when we added nitrous to the boost already. So you can have your cake and eat it too. You can have all of those things if you're choosing between nitrous and boost. The obvious choice is nitrous and boost. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what do we learn from this little adventure comparing nitrous to boost on our 3800 Series 2 V6? Well, we learned the following thing. There's a reason that they call them power 
adders, because they both added a ton of power. I mean, with the nitrous, we gained it more than 100 horsepower. With boost, we gained more than 150 horsepower. So right off the bat, all the boost guys are going, yeah, boost wins, we made more power. But we could add more nitrous and make more power. In fact, if we started out with a more powerful naturally aspirated motor, which you probably would if you were going to build a dedicated nitrous motor, you would start out with a powerful NA motor, then add more nitrous, and then we have more power. But the boosted guys are going, yeah, but we would just add more boost. Here's the important takeaway with either one of these power routers. Make sure a couple of things. First of all, the tune should be spot on. Don't run too much timing or you're going to detonate the motor, whether you have nitrous or boost. Also, when you add a power router, add a power router. Go out and have fun. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Do all that stuff. I will keep testing.